Sí, excelente. Bienvenido. Okay, let's all stand. If you all want to stand, if not, yeah, I can stand anyway. What's that Papa used to say? I can't stand them all. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna. Uh, I guess we have. Everybody will have the words. Let Jesus higher, let Jesus higher.
Which color do you like? 
Pastor Brent didn't want me to make a big deal, so we picked this guy up on the road on the way here today. He says he knows the word, so. Yeah, that, that's going to be. Hey, I just want to post. Here we go. We're going to get this on here. Hey, I just want you to know that many of you have met Pastor Dominic from Costa Rica. And, you know, he was feeling something yesterday, and then this morning when he woke up, he could really feel it in his throat. And you just don't know how bad he wants to be here. So I had to tie him up and leave him, you know, to the bed and make sure. No, that's not the case, but the reality is this, that, you know, he, he has just done such a great job in Costa Rica. We started a church in 2012 in Costa Rica. Two years later, um, we met up, and he um, has now, for the last two years, been um, head pastor at the church there, just doing a wonderful job. Uh, he is a pastor. If you need a pastor in your house, he's there. If you need a ride, he picks you up. If you're someplace where you shouldn't be in the wrong place of the city and you call him, he'll come meet you. <laughs> Continually, many times, just preaching the word and doing things. And so I happen to have, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to find out, okay? Um, are you able to hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Now you can hear me good. Okay, let me try to put this on the on the speaker because he just wanted to give a greeting. He wanted to just say something to you guys. Okay, go ahead. You can hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Okay, hey, I really wanted to be there as Pastor Brent said, but uh, <clears throat> didn't want to put y'all at risk. I think I got a bug. But, uh, you know, I actually had a COVID test just like two days after I started feeling it, and it came back negative. So I know it's not that, but at the same time, I don't want anyone to catch a flu because of me. So just standing here, hanging out in the house, praying, really believing that God is going to do something uh, spectacular uh, today. So um, I just wanted to say a few words before the, the preaching started over.
being trained up. In Acts 15, 35, it talks about teaching and preaching. Like people get trained up. Paul spent three years uh, in one city just teaching every day at a Bible college. And uh, then we find, and this is really the part that I want to focus on, uh, just to prepare us to hear, is Romans 1.11. And that one you can actually open up to if you have it. Romans chapter 1, verse 11. Paul says that it's a big desire in his heart to be able to impart spiritual gifts to the congregation so that they might be established. Remember, I was talking about stability. Well, part of having a stability in my life came from an anointed pulpit that I sat in front of, like sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary did that, and she she chose the, the best part. And so when we really concentrate and trust that the Lord has words for our life, spiritual words and words that are full of life, then we have a different kind of concentration. And what I went through last week, even at the forefront of my mind, it's Jesus and his message for me today. It's not the argument I got in with my wife this morning. It's Jesus and what are his words for me today. When I'm uh, on the way to church and I almost get in a car accident because somebody's being a dummy. Uh, no, that I'm pushing that out of the way because God is going to speak to me right now. And so really part of uh, stability, the kind of stability that can carry you through a pandemic the kind of stability that can carry you through a divorce or a sickness or, or uh, a tragedy in the family, one of the great gifts that God gives to us is a pulpit. And the Holy Spirit is in us confirming the words that are being said and they resonate in our, in our being. And so I just wanted to encourage all of you today that you will see a person in front of you, but there will be a voice behind you, like Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21. And this voice is the Holy Spirit, and he will actually confirm to you, he will say, yes, these are my words. This is the way, walk in it. And so I just wanna pray right now, Lord, teach us how to cultivate hunger and thirst for your word. Teach us how to cultivate a heart that's burning for you and teach us how to have divine concentration so that when you anoint a pulpit and speak through it, that our lives would be radically transformed, that it wouldn't be just words in the air, but it would be the throne of God having a transmission to mankind and those who are humble and listening and full of faith are, are being transformed from glory to glory, Lord. Do it in our hearts today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you, Pastor Dominic. Really appreciate it. And uh, we, there was no glitches in the, in the microphone or the phone mainly. So, hey, we miss you, really. We miss you, and we'll see you soon. Okay, God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Right. Hey, you know, um, it's, uh, I just know how, how much, you know, you, you make plans, you come to a country for your first time, and <laughs> it's like, he just, he wants to be around with people, so it's really, really difficult like that, but, um, hey, we're going to take communion right now. This is one of the great blessings that the, that the Lord has given to us. So um, Paulette will hand out the, the elements. And uh, there it is there. And when we, uh, when we get the elements, then we will, um, I'll say a little something about them. And we will participate together. 
There's a theme that happens with Jesus and what he has done, and that theme is once for all. It's just totally different than all, all of Israel before that, and then Jesus came and he was once for all. So in Hebrews 10.9, it says that, that to, to do his will, he came to do his will, that he would take away old and that he would usher in and establish the new. This is really, really beautiful here. And it's by that will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Wow. Sanctified once and for all. See that there's a reality that he does this, and that's our position, and that's what he does to a person at the point of salvation. He sanctifies them once and for all, and then we are in a continuing maturity of what he has already done in that sanctification. So we have an ongoing sanctification. So as it goes down in Hebrews 10:14, it says that by that one offering, he has perfected forever those that are being sanctified. Can you believe it? Once for all. Can you imagine that? You know, you pay just one car payment and it's done. I'm not talking about the whole thing, just one payment. That would be incredible. 200 bucks. That would be amazing. It's even much greater with Christ. So let's take this. It says, through his body, he broke. His body was broken for us. Take it. I'm ready. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are amazing. What you did for us, we try to read and we try to grasp and we try to understand, but it is so much farther than that. And in the same way in Hebrews 9, 12, he did not take the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood, he entered into the most holy place once for all and he purchased something. Our eternal redemption. It's amazing how when a person is born, their blood isn't passed down to them. Each person develops their own blood. Jesus never sinned his whole life. The sacrifice that he made by the pain of the blood, it was a perfect sacrifice. And it actually purchased an eternal redemption and it was so pure that it was once and for all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Take of the, of the blood. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for what you have done for us. 
we are so thankful that you said do this in remembrance of me because we're a forgetful people. And, but right now, we just have something very intimate with you that we have together. And we just thank you for all that you did. We pray this in your name. Amen. Okay, hey, really, what a, a beautiful thing. Usually, I mean, so far as the, um, with the cups, you can put them under your seat or throw them at me or... Um, what a, here, here's what we're going to do here today. Um, just so thankful. Thank you, Pastor Manny. Even before you came, he was singing all kinds of my, my favorite old songs up here, just filling the room with, with you know, the song of God. And it was so beautiful. So um, what, uh, what he's going to do is he's going to come up for what we call an introduction. And uh, he's going to share some things that are on his heart. But I just want to tell you one thing. Uh, Pastor Manny Harrison. I told some of you, but he did meet my wife on the streets in South Africa. Then taught her English and said, now one day that you know English, some tall American's going to come your way. <laughs> he didn't say it that way, but that's what happened. You know, it was really, and it was the Lord that, you know, had that happen, but Pastor Manny, he has started churches in India, South Africa, the Philippines, and he's been, like, all over many different places because he hears the call from God, and he just lives by faith, and he goes that way. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Pastor Manny. Thank you, Pastor Manny. Thank you, I like all this high-tech stuff. I've had some uh, churches that I started in Africa out in the bush under a uh, Mopani tree. And uh, every once in a while you get an elephant or a, uh, a giraffe walking by in the middle of church service. <laughs> That's always fun. But uh, Father, we ask that you bless uh, this thought pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't need to turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to just be a few minutes. Just so I've had like a bunch of thoughts, different messages scrolling. But um, just thinking of the new things that God does. God reveals in our lives and new work. And in 2 Corinthians 5, we all know this verse, but just listen carefully. It says in verse 17, If any man be in Christ, then he has become. Isn't that great? Then he has become a new creature. How do I become a new creature? Be in Christ. Any man be in Christ, then he has become a new creature. All things, this is good for us retirees, or people that are thinking about retiring, all things are passed away. They're passed away, gone. Pastor Stevens used to teach us, or say this, uh, this is one of my favorite phrases that uh, my pastor uh, used to say, yesterday is gone, now has just passed by. Say, now has just passed by. Tomorrow is not here yet. God is I am. You know, living in who God is. So all things are passed away. All things are new. And the Apostle Paul declared this in epistles that after uh, you know 25 some odd years of ministry is that this is his declaration of who he was. That I am what I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. This is who I am. And in, in, in 1 Chronicles, I think it's 1 Chronicles 4, and verse 9, there is this, you've heard of Jabez? Have you heard Jabez, like the prayer of Jabez? You know what the name Jabez means? 
Well, when Jabez was born, he caused a lot of pain. Any of the ladies have any pain, painful births? When Jabez was born, he caused a lot of pain. Thus his mother named him Jabez, causer of pain. But this is Jabez. Jabez's prayer was this. God, Lord, I am not, I do not want to be identified, and I do not want to live according to my name. I do not want to be the cause of pain. But I want to be one who is blessed of God. I want to be one who is touched by God. I want you to expand my horizons, expand my capacities, expand my coasts. This was the prayer of Jabez. And so often today, there is a identity crisis. You know, like right now, we're all hiding behind masks. We can't figure out. I'm so surprised sometimes. I'm, I'm at Home Depot. And someone says, hey, Manny. <laughs> I go, how do you recognize me? <laughs> it's like, you know, we are, we are, we, we, uh, we're living in a time where people do not have a proper identity, especially Christians, especially believers. Gain our identity from, um, from the, the world system or our status or our culture or uh, our family or what we have done in the past. So often this is how we get our identity and get our name. But God says this, that we, we no longer, we no longer have that name, Jacob. You no longer have that name, liar, cheater, supplanter, somebody conniving. You no longer have that name, Jacob. I will change your name. I'm going to change your name from a liar to the prince of God's promise. That's what I'm going to do. And it's me who will change it. It's also God that changes Abraham's, Abram's name from Abram, father of many, to Abraham, father of a multitude. You know, many nations. And that, you know, um, it's God who identifies each and every one. God wasn't calling God wasn't calling Peter uh, Peter anymore. Oh no, he wasn't calling him Cephas anymore. I, you know, I'm not going to call you. I think the, one of the original uh, meanings of Cephas's name was that that was uh, overthinker. <laughs> Peter uh, Cephas was an overthinker, but he says, I, "I'm changing your name." from one who is insecure, one who is lost in his, uh, the, the smell of being a fisherman. He's, you've lost yourself in that, lost your call. No longer will I call you that. I will call you one of a, a, who is a solid testimony of God. And God is in the name changing business. You know? he, I, he's identifying us, not according to our culture, not according to the things that we do, not by our occupation, not by our past, not by our failures, not by any of this, but he calls us according to his name, a new name, you know? And you are a new creature. And we are to be reminded every day, this is, this is what's so important about uh, hearing the word of God on a daily basis, hearing how God thinks. Because he says that my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. They are higher. There's something more going on than what you see. There's something more going on than what you feel. There's something more going on than your, your, your self-evaluation or how the world has evaluated you. There's something more going on. And it's called, what I, it's called faith. And what is faith? But faith in Romans 10 comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God says, God says, Abraham, I am, I am going to give you a son. And Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 says, I believe. And Abraham, and God says, Abraham, 400 years before the law, 400 years before Moses, you are a righteous man. Righteousness came before the law on the basis of somebody identifying something that God has said and saying, yes. Yes, I'm taking that. I'm believing that. And this is what we do today. We hear what God has to say. We, and we, we, 
we continuously come to a place, we go to where God, what God is, how God is talking. God is speaking. God is saying things to the church. God is speaking to the church. God is speaking to each and every one of us. And this is our desire as believers, is to hear God, right? That's why we're here. You are strange people. <laughs> Coming to here and spending time to hear the word of God. Strange ones. Wow. You're a strange people. A peculiar sort. Well, what an amazing thing, right? All things have passed away. All things are new. All things are new. We're, 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 there's something different about us. And he's, it's called God. There's something different about us. It's called the Word. There's something strange about us. It's called the Spirit of God. There's something else other than what we see that's going on. It is eternal, right? And in closing, Jesus Christ said this, I have come that they might have life. And that word life, and many of you have heard, maybe you heard that word, that word, it's a popular name, Zoe. You know, there's three... Three, word for, three words in the Greek for, for life. One is bios, which is you know, bio, biology, something that's alive. Then there's suke, which is a type of life. Well, he had a great life, or you know, he had a short life. Then you have zoe life. Life as God has life. Life that comes from God. Life that has the same quality as God has. And that is made available to us through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, and the promises of God. And that we, we, are, we are made godly. One last word, I'll quit. <laughs> Isubia, the word for godliness, Isubia means I am a vacuum cleaner of what God, what God uh, has to dish out. I know how to receive well. That's what godliness is. I know how to receive really well from God. You know, the Dallas Cowboys have some really good wide receivers. But I, we are, we are received well from God. And, this is, and this, is our, this is our identity. This is our hope and this is our life. That we are God. Are, we are partakers of the heavenly nature to what God has declared. And what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we ask you to bless these thoughts. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Guess what? A lot of times it takes effort 
to go out and to actually pick something, to try something on, and then we know that we always need confirmation, so we have to bring someone with us, right? Well, how, how's it look? You know? a, a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of investment, a lot of time for just some physical clothes. And it's actually in Matthew 6, you know, it's something that he says, listen, don't worry about that, I'm going to provide that. But then, he says, I have a spiritual wardrobe for you. I want to lay it out there, and I want to, I want you to, to see what I have for you. And we're going to look at that today. So, um, I, there was a thought that I had. Actually, it was something that I came across. There was a, a person that started serving in a church. And this person, he was there for a couple months, and they said, okay, you can be an usher. So he met the usher, and, you know, this elderly lady came up and just said, hey, I would like to sit down in front. Well, you know, he kind of knew a little bit of something, and he said, oh, you really don't want to go down in front. The, the preacher, he's kind of boring. You're going to fall asleep, and you know, it might not be a good thing. She said, um, do you know who I am? And he said, well, no, I don't. She said, I am the preacher's mother. Oh, man, that kind of so embarrassed. He, he's like, he just said, I'm so sorry. I'm really, I'm so sorry. And he said, do you know who I am? And she said, well, no, I don't. He goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that, that was going to be the end there. And he went and got somebody else to help her. So that, hey, we got to watch out on those things, right? Um, yeah, I need to try to, okay, maybe I can put this like that. Okay, that, that works great. Oh, I have some glasses here too. Man, any more glasses out there? Let's make me all feel good. All right, everyone. I fought this for a long time, you know that? I need it for reading, though. Um, hey, I, I want to turn to Ephesians 4. And if you feel like standing up in a little change of position, that's fine. I'm going to read a few words in Ephesians 4. And um, it's, it's actually it's going to be talking about this wardrobe. And we're going to look at a number of different verses and how is God going to clothe us. So if we look at verse uh, 4, it's going to be 17. It says, This I say, therefore, and I testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. The futility doesn't mean that it was an emptiness. It's just that they filled it with so many things that were not God's thoughts. So it was futile, the thoughts that they had. They could have some type of even an intellectual argument, but it was futile because of what they put into their mind. Having their understanding darkened. That's the second one. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Okay? Those couple verses just describe the problem with the world system. You know, they are ignorant of the things of God. They have a blindness in their heart. They have a futility in, in their thought process. And they... <laughs> they have ignorance. But in verse 19, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you in Grace Church of Medicine, you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth that is in Jesus. Okay, Lord, just speak to us. We want to know your heart. We want to know your thoughts towards us. 
We want to see what you have given us that we can adorn ourselves in your gifts. And we just pray this in your name, Lord. Amen. Okay, so you have a seat. You know, when a person gets saved, God gives them a brand new closet. Yes, we have things that we can still be um, immature, and we have that, that closet there. But I think that God really wants us to learn of the things that we would be able to put on the Lord Jesus. We want to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. This is how God creates to be renewed in the, in the spirit of our mind. We want to be able to see the things that God has given us. And in, in Isaiah 61, verse 10, he, it, it's so beautiful how he says, listen, I want to actually, when a person gets saved, I want to give you a garment of salvation. This is something that you put on. And then on top of that, I give you a robe of righteousness. A robe of righteousness. What does that mean to us today? I mean, none of us have this robe that we walk around with, you know, and this is God's righteousness. He wants us to see that righteousness was developed in the Old Testament. It was actually kind of earned. It was by following the law. This is the way that, that we would try to produce a righteousness for ourselves. And Philippians 3.9 talks about this and how the Apostle Paul had, a, had a, a, a revelation that it was no longer a righteousness by the law, but it was a righteousness that was a gift from God and it was in Christ Jesus. Wow. What else? What other kind of shirts and pants and dress or whatever you have? What do you have for me, Lord? 1 Corinthians 1.30. It is so beautiful that he says, listen, I will give you the wisdom from God. You, see, you need this wisdom of God so that you can actually rightly discern the things that God has given them to, to you so that you will know how to apply them in your life. A lot of our struggle comes from not knowing how to apply the truth of Christ in a practical application in our life. So in 1 Corinthians, I think in 1 Corinthians 1.30, he says that I will give you huh, righteousness. I will sanctify you. I give you a sanctification. I give you a redemption. I have redeemed your life. It's so beautiful. So in 1 Corinthians 2, 12, he says, I have not given you the spirit of the world. I have given you the spirit of God because you need to operate and learn how to mature in the spirit so that you can know the things that I have freely given you. Wow, what a beautiful verse, isn't it? It's like... He's the one that wires us up and gives us the ability and gives us a spiritual birth and gives us his, um, um, really the, the, the spirit to be in our life so that we can understand the things that have been freely given to us. Hundreds of things he has given us. Wow, we just, I mean, we looked at three right there, right? I always like when verses have three or four of these gifts that, that God gives to us. He's given us a garment of salvation. He's given us the robe of righteousness. So what's in, in the other part of the closet? The other part of the closet, it has corruption over there. Corruption has deceitful lust, the natural mind, self-orientation. But God says, I've given you a wardrobe over here on this side. I've given you the new man that Pastor Manny was talking about. Uh, the corruption is gone. I have given you a new identity. I've given you a destiny. A destiny. For all of eternity. Yeah, but if you've given that, gosh, I don't know if I can like keep that. 1 Peter 1, 
3 through 5, he says, listen, I have given you a living hope. This isn't just a hope that comes from, you know, a series of artifacts that try to prove a, a, a reality in your life. But I have given you a living hope that is actually the Godhead living within us. That I have already reserved a place forever for you in heaven. And verse 5 says, and it is kept by the power of God. Oh, are you kidding me? The pressure is off of me. I don't have to keep my salvation. You have done it. This is incredible. I think I'm just going to go do whatever I want then. People say that. You know what it means we want to really do? Fall down on my knees and say, Thank you, Lord. I can't believe I wasn't able to do it. And you said that you will keep it for me. That you will do this for my life. This is incredible. This is this has to do with like three elements. Now these three elements, usually we would take a, a semester for each one, and we're just going to take a couple minutes. And that is that who really is God? Who is God? I don't want to know just you know a thought. How is uncreated love? Because God is love. And that love never had a beginning. But that love has me as a target for his laser beam to just change my whole life. Wow. Who is God? Who is he that he would be mindful of man? Who is he that would realize that no one else could solve the great problem that was in the world, which was sin that came in and distorted and ruined everything? Who else could actually come and be the solution? Other than saying, I have a plan. And the Son says, I am going to execute that plan. And the Spirit says, and I will reveal it to those people who desire. Thank you. The plan worked. It worked. Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. made a perfect sacrifice. And here, and here he is. You know, if it, he says, this is what your job is in Hebrews 12, too. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, because what he did, he despised the shame of the cross, but then he sat down at the right hand of the Father in a completed, finished work position, and they were just, they might have high-fived each other right at that time. They, they, they could have, really. You know, and like, it is Finished. One of the greatest declarations that this world has ever heard. It came from the cross in John 19.30 from, from the Lord Jesus after he just finished the work on the cross. All that the Father gave him, he finished it. And what we're doing is we're realizing we're an unfinished people. And wow, what he finished is actually going to make the complete difference in my life. 